In the past year, I observed a group of 10 to 15 feral cats in their everyday lives that my neighbor was feeding. This video documents some of the more interesting scenes which took place in my and my neighbor's yards. They are shy and keep their distance to humans, but have gradually gotten to know me. I have given them names to better tell them apart. My neighbor's patio is their home, where she puts out the food for them. They know exactly when it is feeding time and gather around the door. There is no fighting for the food and they have pretty good table manners. But this is probably because they know that there is enough for everyone. This guy claims the bowl for himself by sitting in it. The others don't like it because it keeps them from eating as long as he sits there. After they have filled their bellies, they groom and find a comfortable place to relax for a while. This is Spike at an age of about 4 to 5 months. Early in 2020, a litter of 4 kittens was born under a pile of wood in my backyard. Spike is one of the two females from this litter. I watched them during their first forays from their home and later their wild games and explorations. They like to get together as a group to come over to my yard, like a group of school children on an excursion. The black one is Baloo, brother of Torch, two boys from the same litter. Spot, who is a 6 to 7 month old female, is not closely related to them. They are walking over the wood pile where they were born. Torch meets the black and white needles here, another young male from a different litter. They are good buddies. This little girl is White Ear, who is about the same age as Spike, but from a different litter. White Ear and Spike like to play with each other and I often see them together. Needles is ready for some action. Today, Spot is part of this group, although she is often in the company of her sister Maisy. Everything is investigated. These little guys are very observant, little escapes their attention. The cats are very quiet and hardly make a sound. Very occasionally I hear one screaming, 
when there is a fight. But these here all know each other well and don't fight seriously. Could there be a mouse in there? Balu checks it out. Apparently not. But I think there was a mouse here. I can smell it. Spike and White Ear look very similar, and it took me a while to figure out who is who by their slightly different markings. Together with Needles, they are the three black and white members of the group. Needles, as the male, is already slightly bigger than the two girls. Grey and White Torch looks the most like his mother. Hmm, that bird, Red Hooded Woodpecker, looks interesting. But too far up there for me. Anything that rustles or moves invites them for a game. The kittens love to play. But if I get my finger too close to spot, she swats it with her paw, but the claws are retracted. It is her way of warning me to not come any closer. White Ear is having so much fun, she actually tolerates some petting. But this is a one-time deal. Needles is taking a break. No playing with the girls for him. He prefers watching this from a distance. There has to be a mouse in there somewhere. Does Baloo remember shredding the fabric above the irrigation valves with his siblings? I do.
Is this a good hiding place? It is a good place for a nap after all this excitement. And what is this thing? Ah, a cat hammock. Meet Cat Mom. She is the best mother in this group. Her first litter, early in 2020, consisted of four kittens. The two girls, Spike and Velvet, and their brothers, Torch and Baloo. She took good care of them all, and they survived to become independent. A few months later, I noticed she was pregnant again. Her belly bulged. Then one day, she was thin again, so I knew she had given birth. I soon found out that the babies were again hidden in the same pile of wood. But then disaster struck. An animal discovered the kittens, killed and ate one. At once, she moved them to a new hiding place. It took me a while to find out where. I discovered two kittens, maybe three weeks old, under the shed next to my house. They were often crying because they were hungry. This was strange. Cat Mom had never before let her kittens go hungry. But I did see her visit them to feed them, just not often enough. The noise soon attracted unwanted attention. Within a few days, both kittens were killed by some other animal, possibly a tomcat, because they were not eaten. Still Cat Mom wandered through my yard several times a day. She was very careful now, looked around to make sure no one was watching before disappearing in always the same spot through the fence to my other neighbor's yard. When I investigated more closely, I discovered she had hidden three more kittens under some bushes there. They were about four weeks old now and just start starting to wander around a bit. Every day Cat Mom spent some time with them, but most of the time they were on their own. They were very shy and retreated at the slightest movement or noise. Cat Mom went out to hunt every day, and I saw her come back with a mouse in her mouth several times. Afterwards, she went back to my neighbor's patio to get some food and water for herself. My cat, Grisha, found it difficult to put up with all these cats in what he considered his yard. He liked to go out for a stroll and check out the latest cat males. But he was always afraid that he would get attacked and injured which had happened several times in the past. He remained cautious and alert when outside. When he would spot another cat, he was always the one who retreated. 
if necessary, in a hurry. It did not matter that the other cat was velvet, a young curious female and not an aggressive tomcat. Needles is interested in the stranger and followed him to the house. Who is this guy? But going in there? Well, maybe not. Sometimes a larger animal will show up in the cat gang's territory. The cats are not familiar with this strange creature, but they are interested. Quickly, several of them gather to stalk it while it is nibbling fresh leaves. In order to prevent the cats from reproducing uncontrolled, my neighbors and me spent time trying to trap them, get them spayed and neutered and release them again. Food was set in the traps, most of them were caught soon, some several times. A few were too smart, they had to be tricked before we were successful. But this black and white creature did not turn out to be a cat, it was a skunk. Some cats claim my front yard as their territory, while others prefer the backyard. Here, Spot and White Ear came over, looking for some fun. Shy Spike also looks interested, but prefers to stay near safe cover first to see what's going on. Sometimes I give them a little food to get them more used to my company. Then a quick room and off to look for something to hunt or play with. This is my Z, the first of the kittens to be interested in spending time with a human, and the only one who let me pet her more regularly. She is the sister of Spot and is about 9 months old here. She is a front yard cat and loves to play with a moving stick with much energy. As with most of the cats, I don't know where she came from, except for cat mom's two litters they may have wandered in from somewhere else, attracted by the free food my neighbor hands out. Because she's fairly tame, Mycy was the first one to get trapped and spayed. Here she is just back from the visit to the vet, looking much subdued. Her belly was shaved for the operation and one ear was clipped to indicate her altered status so that she will not be trapped again. For the first few days she moved around slowly, resting a lot. Then feeling better and with a wound healing, she slowly resumes her normal activities but it takes a long time for the fur to grow back. The other cats were also captured, one by one, and had their turn at the vet.
the females were a little easier to trap and handle than the males. After they were released, most of them took a dim view of humans for a while and kept a lot more distance to me before they regained their confidence. After the kittens were about six weeks old, Cat Mom introduced them to the rest of the gang by bringing them to the patio during feeding times. I named the little black one Carrie, the grey one Bimbo, and the only female got the name Leah. The other cats were cautious at first. The little newcomers also seemed to be a little scared of the other adults, but enjoyed playing with each other. Everything new they discovered was pressed into service as a toy. Earlier, when the kittens were still in their hiding place, a stranger, a big black tomcat, came near the den. He wanted to mate with Cat Mom, but she was not interested. She feared he would injure or kill the kittens. She immediately intercepted him and with flattened ears and bushy tail made it clear that he was not welcome. When he ignored her warning, she attacked him and they fought with claws outstretched and furs flying. Fortunately, Cat Mom was successful and the Tomcat realized that there was nothing in it for him here and escaped. Of course, there have to be regular returns to the source of the milk. But if Cat Mom does not feel like getting milk, she makes the access denied message clear by lying down. Cat Mom considers cleaning their fur important enough to lick them when she can, but the little guys rarely hold still. This is Dupli, an older female sitting on the bench here. I named her Dupli because she looks like a duplicate of Maisie. Her best friend is Needles, this black and white young male. They love to spend time together. These scenes were filmed before they were spayed and neutered, but even afterwards their relationship did not change.
They simply love each other. This is Velvet, one of Cat Mom's kittens from the first litter. She is practicing balancing on the fence. She does not seem sure yet which way is the best one to go about it, but her sense of balance is excellent. Plus, from up here she has a great view of the, of the yard. Maisy wants to show that she can do this too. Cat Mom needs a break from the tedious job of tending the kittens. But dinner time and duty call and she goes back to the patio where she has left them. Now she fits easily through the gap in the fence again. While she was highly pregnant with six kittens, it was rather difficult. Robbie is the youngest of the group, except for the new kittens. He and his brother were orphaned at about six weeks of age and had to survive among the other cats without having a mother to take care of him. But he is a survivor and loves to play. That is his brother hogging the food bowl again. The bird cage is popular because it has thick padding on its floor and it is a comfortable place to sleep. I have seen as many as four cats squeeze into it. Robbie has a distinctive paint scheme. Finally, Cat Mom has time to clean herself. Baloo wanders off to chew some grass as after dinner snack. Spot and Mysie are also thinking about what to do next. Oh, she forgot to get a drink. Back to supervising kittens. Come on, Leah. After dinner is a good time to get some rest and at the same time supervise the territory. Needles has found a great spot on top of my vegetable cage. Velvet is not ready to be lazy. She is always active and on the prowl.
Could this be something to hunt? Hmm, maybe not, but this smells interesting. How about this bird? The twitching tail means she's excited, but it is too far up. Sometimes the guys like to hang out together. Torch and Needles are looking for adventures and having some fun. This, of course, includes chasing each other around the yard. They have also discovered a great climbing rig. My old swing frame, which is part of my deer obstacle course. It is intended to make it more difficult for the deer to jump over the fence and eat my plants but they always seem to find a way to get across anyway. Hey, this is easier than climbing a tree. In the meantime, Robbie is sitting in the front yard, hoping to find someone to play with. He is the only male cat who likes to play with a group of girls, maybe because he is still smaller than them. Velvet is also checking things out. What is Baloo doing there? Oh, just taking care of some urgent business. Cat mom looks like she's sleeping, but in reality she is supervising her kittens. She has brought them to a new home, this time under the shed in my backyard. Now about eight weeks old, they can play there safely while she rests in a shady spot. This is their older brother Torch, sitting at their front door. Here's Bimbo, checking out what's going on. He is watching Torch closely, so that he can learn from his example. But Torch does not have much patience to be his little brother's babysitter and goes off for his own adventures. Bimbo has already learned that it is important to have a good perch, even if it is only a brick high. Next, Aunt Dupli comes visiting.
What is she sniffing there? Bimbo can't resist. He has to follow her to investigate what she is doing. Oh, hi. Just checking up on this corner. Isn't mom here somewhere? Cat mom has a special sound that means come here, but she only uses it when it is really important. Leah, the shy one, feels left out and comes looking for her brother. She is insecure and does not want to be out there without cover, so she hurries after him. Okay, let's all go home to the patio. Torch and Velvet think there is a mouse in one of the vegetable cages. They may be right, there is a hole in the ground. What other fun things can you do in this cage? Torch has plenty of ideas, but Velvet is skeptical. She thinks the plants need to be watered. Needles prefers to watch all this strenuous activity from a comfortable hiding place. Sadly, Torch was killed by a car a few days later. Birds are some of the animals that the ca cats hunt successfully. Velvet is slowly becoming proficient at catching a careless or inexperienced one here and there. First she plays with it for a while then takes it to a safe place to eat it. Dupli is looking for her friend Needles. Ah, there he is. Let's go out together. Let's have a date.
Aren't those two cats like lovebirds? Today, Needles is out hunting by himself. He has found this great post to use as a lookout. From here he can listen if anything rustles in the dry grass or if a bird lands on the ground. This scrub jay had better watch out. Needles wastes no time in stalking it. But the jays are pretty smart and alert. Oh well, maybe next time. A group of young cats is out at my backyard. I decided to try a new toy on them. I tied a rope to a stick to see if they would chase it. At first, they are cautious as with anything new. Spot is the first one to give it a try. She soon figures out that this thing is not dangerous and gets more and more eager to chase it. Then the others join in. Needles grabs it and tries to disappear under the shed with it. Soon Dubli tries her paws at it. This is fun! Spot is determined to take it home with her. Very determined. Micey watches the activity from the safety of the shed roof. She is not convinced yet that this is something she should join in. But Spot can't get enough. Even Robbie comes through the fence to take a look at what this is all about. Micey has left the roof, can't let her sister have all the fun. But it's not the rope that she is interested in. Right now, a wrestling match with Spot is her idea of fun. Early in April 2021, Spot disappeared. We don't know where she is, but we miss her.
Here is Dupli, trying out a new perch. Dupli is about to find out why this is not as great as she thought at first. It may be good for watching birds, but this works both ways. Needles is curious enough to try it as well, but he does not like it. A scrub jay has figured out that the cat cannot chase him up here. On the contrary, she is stuck and he can approach without danger and start pestering his old enemy. Frustrated, Dupli tries to turn, but this is like a cage. The bird is having the time of his life, pecking at a helpless cat. How did I get into this? Or, more to the point, how do I get out of here? I saw a bird. I will go stalk it. These birds visit my yard once in a while. What do you mean bird? This is a monster! But they went after it. Maisie was more realistic in her target and was successful. Despite their efforts, the cats have not made a visible dent into the bird population. I have not seen Robbie catch anything successfully other than the rope, but he is very eager to chase it. The front yard is his favorite playground. They all often gather at the door and wait for me to come out to entertain them. Most of the time, I'm the one to stop the game, but here Velvet had enough and goes home. Spike sees a stranger she has not met before. How will the meeting go? There is a big older male in her yard. She approaches him warily. He is so well hidden in the grass that startled she jumps away. Then it is Maisie's turn. She spots the intruder from a distance and also approaches curiously, while he seemingly ignores the smaller female. He briefly moves towards her, then decides to retreat to avoid any conflict. The newcomer turns out to be Moki, a 12-year-old neutered male who is normally the cat lady's house cat. He had escaped for the day and is now exploring the backyard. Here he is confronted by Kuhn, also an older, fully grown but neutered male. Kuhn approaches Moki confidently, his presence is a warning. This is my territory. 
Moki understands and prefers to continue on his way without showing aggression, but he cocks his ear back to hear if he's being followed. Needles and Spike are on their morning walk around the house to see what is going on in the backyard. Dupli is already expecting them. In the cool air, they are feeling frisky. They are hunting and looking for anything that moves. How about that young woodpecker up there? Velvet hears something in that bush. It may be long gone, but she does not give up. Needles watches her closely. Now he too is convinced that there is something, but it may just be a large insect. While these two are distracted, Dupli has gone to work and came back with a real mouse. Proudly she displays it by playing with it. Apparently she's not real hungry yet. Spike just watches. She knows that she cannot have the mouse. The Needles knows, notices the activity. He walks up to them, grabs Dupli's mouse and claims it for himself. A few quick glances towards Dupli reassure him that she does not intend to challenge him for the theft. But Dupli accepts that Needles has the right to take what he wants. He plays with it for a while, then eats it. Spike cannot bear to watch and pretends to be interested in something totally different, but she secretly follows the progress of Needle's meal.
With that good food in his belly, Needles is ready for more action. Dupli and Spike search the ground in the hope that something is left over, but no luck. After all this work, Dupli needs a nap. This concludes my video of the year of the cats. I missed some good scenes when I did not have the camera handy, but it still shows a representative sample of their activities. When the kittens were between 8 and 12 weeks old, I captured them and trained them as house cats. First was Carrie, then Nia and Bimbo. At first they were terrified of me, but after three days they had accepted me as their surrogate mother. Despite their different personalities, they learned very quickly and I took them to the Humane Society, where they were neutered, vaccinated and adopted. They have gone to new homes and lives as house cats. The rest of the gang still enjoys their free but more dangerous life outside.